In this video, I will perform a linear static analysis to find the principal stresses on this loaded beam. Full details of this exercise are on page 323 of the linked PDF in the video description below. I'll go ahead and switch over to a new session, the Patran. Make sure this is a new session you've just opened. I'll go ahead and create a new file, save it here and call it problem 3. I'll go ahead and click OK here. I'll first begin by saying the units are in inches, pounds, and PSI. I'll create my first two surfaces by going to the geometry tab, and under surfaces I'll be using the XYZ method. So first I'll start from the point 0, negative 6, 0, and I'll use a vector going in the X 20 inches, and the Y 12 inches, and then the Z 0 inches. And after I click apply, you see my first surface is created using these values 20, 12, and 0. Here I can then click this point. I'll drop point 4 here and I'll use the same vector to create my second surface. To make a guide later on for my results, I'll create my five points for A, B, C, and the second A and B. So here under points, click X, Y, Z. I'll go ahead and type in my first point which is at 10, 6, 0. My second point is at 10, 5.50. 5, my next point is at 10, 0, 0. My next point is at 10, negative 5.50. 5, and my last point is at 10, negative 6, 0. Close it and click apply. You see the, the points are hard to see here. What you can do is go back to the home tab and turn on the point size here. Now you can see the points we've just created. Now I'll go ahead and create my material by going to the properties tab. Under isotropic, click or type in a name of material. Under input properties, give it a Young's modulus of 3E7 PSI and a Poisson ratio of 0.318. Click OK and click apply to create this material. Next, we want to assign this material to these two surfaces. So here under 2D Properties, click Shell. Call this property. Under Input Properties, use this material you've just created. For your thickness, give it a value of 1.535 inches. Click OK. For your application region, we wish to apply this material to these two surfaces. So select this surface, then hold the shift key and select the surface and you should see one and two here. Click add, OK, and click apply to assign the material to these two surfaces. Next I can move on to defining my boundary conditions. I'll first define a nodal displacement constraint. This first constraint called Rx will prevent translation in the x direction. So here under translations you have to supply values for just T1. So I can type in 0, comma, comma, click OK. We wish to apply this to this middle curve. So here is select only curve or edge. So you only select curves and not points or surfaces. Select this middle curve. Make sure this cursor is in this box. So when you click on something, it drops that value in here. And as long as you see this line is highlighted orange, you know you've selected the correct object. Click Add, click OK, and Apply. You see the one there saying you've assigned a boundary condition here. Next, we want to make two rollers that prevent translation in the Y direction. So I'll call this next one RY. Under Input Data, for my translations, I wish to prevent T2 motion. So here I'll delete the 0 for the X and type in 0 for the Y there. Click OK. Under your application region, we wish to select two points. So here I will click point or vertex. So I only select points. So here I've selected the point on curve 3 of surface 2. And I can add it now. The next point I'll do is this point, which is point 1 on curve 1 of surface 1. So then I can add this also. Click OK and apply. 
So now we have the two rollers here and here. Next I'll make a new constraint called RZ and this is meant to prevent translation in the Z or T3 direction. And this will be applied to both the left and right surfaces. So here I'll just select surface or face. So I only select surfaces. Select surface one, hold the shift key and select surface two. Click add, okay and apply. Now I need to define my force. Under nodal force, click this icon, call it F for your input data. We have zero in the X, you can leave a blank. You have a downward force of negative 18,440 pounds in the Y. And we have nothing for the Z direction. So click OK for your application region. We wish to select one point, so select point over your text, select this point. So it's point two of curve two of surface one. Click add, okay, and apply. And you'll see it defined here. Now I can go ahead and mesh these two surfaces. I'll use mesh seeds to guide the mesh. So first I'll define 24 elements going up and down the verticals. So I want 24 elements, and then I simply select these two surface or curves, and they're automatically seeded. Next, I want to make 20 elements for this curve and this curve. So I type in 20 here. I delete these objects. Simply drag and select. The seed is automatically generated here because I have auto execute on. And I do the same thing here. Now automatically seeds these curves too. Can then go and mesh my surface by selecting these two surfaces here. So make sure you have two and one here and click apply. Now let me go back to the home tab and hide my mesh using this icon here. What the mesher has done is mesh this surface independent of this surface. So to show you, when I go to display finite elements and when I click edges here and hit apply, you see that the mesh boundary is highlighted in white. In reality, this entire section should be one entire mesh. But when I go back to my actual mesh, it appears as if it is, but in reality it's not. What I have to do is do an equivalence to remove the duplicate nodes that are here. So let me go back to faces here, click apply, let me reveal the geometry again. Here under label control, you can select node, and if you zoom in, you see that you can clear, clearly read the node numbers for these. But the ones in the middle, you can see that there are multiple numbers that are indicating there are multiple nodes at this one location. And we have to go ahead and remove these duplicate nodes. To do this, go to the meshing tab, click equivalence, and you can close this FM attributes window and make sure this is equivalence here. Go to the bottom and click apply. You see that the pink markers indicated which nodes have been removed. And now you can see that there is only one number at the same location. So if I go back to display finite elements and just show the edges and click apply, let me hide the node numbers. Let me hide this too, clean it up. Now you can see what was before a two-body section is now a one complete section. So now I can go back to faces and hit apply. Let me reveal the geometry again. And now I'm done meshing and I can go to the analysis tab and click entire model to analyze this and hit apply.
once the analysis is done, I'll import my XDB results here and I'll hit apply to import. I go to the results tab. Now the first thing I'll go ahead and do is zoom into this location. I'll enlarge this window. Now we've been asked to find the stress tensors for these five points. So under the results tab, click tensor. Select this case, select this result. Ensure it says component here and we just wish to see the X, the Y, and the XY results. So, and we want to view this for just a few nodes. So here under target entities, which is this icon, I wish to just focus on a few select nodes. And I'll select this by individually picking these points I made at, at the beginning of the video. So select this point, hold the shift key to select multiple nodes, and simply select these. You should have five nodes selected here. So now when you click apply, you see that there are values there. So when I zoom in, You can compare these values to the ones that we should get. So to compare a few values, my X values, I should be getting a value close to 2200 at B, 2500 at A, zero at the middle, 2200 at the bottom, and 2500 at the bottom fiber. So let me go back to Patron. And to compare just the X results, I would turn off X, Y, and Y, Y, and just have the X one on, click apply. If I zoom in, I can see I get, it looks like 2300 here. And the last time this problem was done, they received 2300 and it's close to the value of 2500. For point B, I should be receiving a, receiving a value close to 2200. So back here, I get a value of 2100. And that is actually what they got last time. In the middle, I should get a value of zero. Last time they received a value of 100. And if I zoom out, slide this over, I can see I get a value of uh, 120. Uh, last time this problem was performed, they received a value of 2400. I should actually get a value of 2200. If I zoom out and slide it to the bottom again, that's actually what I, I do get. The bottom I get uh, what looks like 2600. And that is what they got last time, but we should be receiving a value of 2,500. Now here for shears x, y, you can simply turn off the x direction and turn on the x, y and click apply. And then you can do the same thing I just did and just compare to what we should be getting. So here at the bottom, last time this was done, we got a 54 here at the bottom, but we should actually get zero. For the next point, we got uh, 100 PSI. We should be receiving 120. And you can do this and compare the other points. Next, I want to do uh, or find my principal stresses so I can switch show as to 2D principal. And for now, I just want to view my maximum principal stresses. So then I click apply. And I go back to the PDF. I can start comparing these values. So I get 2600, 2400, 750, 26, 24, 700, or 760. Then I should be getting uh, what looks like 11 and uh, 4 for the other ones. So 12. 
and the other one is 29 but I should be receiving a zero there and four it's close to zero the next thing they wanted us to view are my sigma x stresses and this can be done as follows back in the results tab click fringe here under stress tensor select this for your quantity select the x component before we click apply here let's fit the model in the view so click fit view here under the home tab hide your geometry you'll notice that there are points here and it sort of obscures the view after I click this it hides the points so now I can click apply and if the numbers are still here you can click refresh graphics and click apply again or if you want to reveal the displacement too you can click fringe deformation select the same stress tensor select the x component for quantity and for displacement select this translational click OK or apply and here uh, we want to remove this blue undeformed view so I can go back to deform attributes and uncheck show undeformed and click apply and you'll see this resembles the image here I'll view my stresses in the Y too so let me go right now we are in a deform attributes so I'll go back to select results under quantity select the Y component and click apply you'll see it looks like this view next I'll view my tau XY stresses so here I will click the XY component and click apply next thing I want to view is my orientation angle of the maximum principal stress so here under fringe result you'll see principal stress direction you click that and click apply and the view updates you'll see it resembles this image make sure to save your work and this concludes this example.